what it means to us in this world and there is a matrix that is around us there's a matrix on the good side there's a matrix on the bad side that there's a way of looking at the world which makes you a true muslim and one that can see with the help of allah azza wa jal what, what does what did allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam say he said beware of the insight and the ability of a believer having an inner look at things because he sees through the light of Allah Azza wa Jal. So there are people who actually on this earth, whom Allah has given them firasa, Allah has opened, opened things to them and He doesn't do it to everyone. But not only them, we as believers, even if you don't have this firasa inside you, you know, this, this talk is for you as well. Why? Because the Qur'an that has been given to us, this Qur'an is our way of looking at the entire world. At the same time, you've got certain people in this world who, who have been sort of given such an impression of the world that they don't see anything be, be, beyond the material that they see, the material that they have. Now, just to give you a quick thing, that in the time of uh, Suleiman alayhi salatu salam, uh, he heard of this queen, Queen Sheba. And she was a very powerful queen. She had a whole army of jinns that were under her. And Suleiman also had a whole army of jinns under him. Now it was going to become a big battle if one of these did not, you know, subdue. If, if Bilqis wasn't going to subdue, it was going to become a big battle. But anyway, long story short, he sends a letter to her through the hoopoo bird. And then in the end, she consults her jinns and they say, look, you know, we're ready to fight, but it's up to you, you know, your royal highness, what you want to do. So she says, look, you know, fighting will only cause corruption and bloodshed and so on. And I want to try and test this individual. Let me try and, you know, he says he's a messenger. And I know that messengers, if they're given a gift, almost in a form of a bribery, like, you know, calm down. Okay, so if I give him a nice gift, hopefully, you know, we'll see eye to eye. And she sends that gift, and when it comes to Suleiman, he says, you're trying to bribe me with some kind of wealth, what Allah has given me is much better. He says, I'm going to tell them, I'm going to get my army ready right now, and if and, you know, I, I will bring them right down to our kingdom by them being, you know, lowly in front of us. And the news is basically going back to Bilqis, and she understands, and she says, you know what, let, 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 let me go straight to Suleiman, and let me show, you know, that I'm submitting to him, but let me take it easy. So she's on her way, and before she can get to Suleiman a.s. Uh, quarters, he, he, he's in his uh, quarters and he says, who's going to bring me her throne? In the end, one of, the, one of them brings the throne with the blink of an eye in front of him. And what he does is, he, want, he finds out that this woman, see the hoopoo bird told him that this woman, Bilqis, and a whole, a whole kingdom, they worship the sun. They see the sun coming, <coughs> rising up, they worship the sun throughout the day, so he wants to now make her believe in Allah. How does he make this woman believe in Allah? Does he just say, you know, Bilqis, I am Suleiman, I am the Rasul of Allah, and here's a book I've got from before, and you better believe, look how truthful this is. And is this the way to give dawah to this woman who's a queen in her own right? You can't do that, you can't force anyone. So how is he going to make this woman see the truth? So what does he do? He builds a test for her. He prepares this before Bilqis even arrives. So Bilqis comes, she sees her throne, you know, he says, do you recognize this? And she says, as if it's the one I have. Alright, so already she sees that this man's got some serious power. He sent someone over there to her kingdom, brought this whole, you know, whole massive throne and presented it in front of her. He changed it a little, so she said, it's as if it's the one that I've got. Anyway, he then takes her to a chamber, this large room, okay, this large room or hallway. When they open the door, they've got to go through this to another room. When she opens the door, she sees that there's water in this room. And she's going to go through this room to the next part that Suleiman is going to take her. 
So as she is going to step inside, she lifts her garment up slightly so that it doesn't get wet. But when she puts her foot on the ground, it's glass. It was so clear that the glass was cleaned and polished so well and it was made so magnificently above this water that she didn't even see the glass. Guys, do you know what I'm talking about? Have you ever seen like, you know, you go to a building and there's some glass doors there and people don't realize the glass door, they walk and boom. You ever seen that? You're laughing, you've seen it. Yeah, you know, you've not just seen it, you, you use the one. <laughs> anyway. What I'm trying to say is that she did not realize it was so clean. So she put her foot down and Sulaiman straight away said that this is glass. And there and then Bilqis, this clever, intelligent woman realizes and she does Toba and she says, Ya Allah, what have I done? Sulaiman did the whole test to make her a believer. How? She looked at this magnificent work and she said, where have I been? She said, Rabbi inni zalamtu nafsi. My Lord, I, I have wronged myself. Because all my life I've been looking at a sun that is visible to me and that material world has taken my grasp and taken a whole, my whole mind away. That this is the biggest planet I see every day, the strongest, the one that gives us all energy. So that is the one that I've been worshipping, not realizing that between the sun and myself and between your creation and us and between the heavens and the earth and between anything, Allah says what? He is with you wherever you are and Allah is well watching whatever you are doing. Now she didn't see the invisible God. But she saw the visible sun. So she started to worship whatever was material in front of her eyes. Whatever was what she could actually see and visualize. So the same way she couldn't see the glass. But she saw the water and she reacted to the water. The water was visible, but the glass wasn't visible. So she got the message that Sulaiman is trying to tell her and give a da'wah that don't just go with what you can see. And la ilaha illallah, this is a big message for the youth and for us who are growing up, and especially in this part of the Western world, because the whole Western philosophy is based upon what you can assess and what you can do. And in the science classes, sometimes they laugh at you saying there's a God. And sometimes you sit there, you say, you think, what's he talking about? What, what, what? I, you know, the Molly Sahib said that there is a lie. You know, the Molly Sahib said that. But this guy, I can't find an argument to give to him to prove Allah. My friend, you try and use every visible thing that you want to try and prove Allah. There'll always be an argument against it. Where there's heads, there's tails. Iman is something which goes beyond that. And that's what Bilqis understood. That Iman is something which is just not to do with what you can measure from the physical and material things that you see. And she understood that. But I'm not saying it's all that, because guys, if you want any physical, the greatest physical and, and tangible proof that Allah exists, it's the Qur'an. How? The proof of this is in many different ways. The biggest one is that Allah Azza wa Jal has challenged the whole of mankind. From the time of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for 1430 something years, He has challenged every single year, every day the challenge is up, every day the challenge is there, every week, every month, every year is there. Which is that, look, I'm going to create this book on the earth, and you've got books as well on the earth. In fact, they've tried so many times to try and change this. But you can't change it. You just can't. It's impossible. The miracle of the Qur'an is in many ways. That's just one element of it. Another big miracle of the Qur'an is that this Qur'an for 1400 years has always given meaning to every single context it goes through. Not only that. This is just two things I've presented. There's no part of any scripture, of any rhyme, of any place, of anything in the whole of the world that you can carry on saying again and again and again and again and again without getting bored. 
every single day, every day of our lives. Either we're reciting or we hear it and we say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawmiddin, Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'een, Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqeem, Sirat Al-Ladheena An'amta Alayhim, غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. Tell me with Iman who was bored of that. Yet every day, every week of your life, every month of your life, you never got to the third month and said, I'm bored. You never got to the third year of your life and said, I want something different. You never did that. Why? Because Iman is something Allah has given. This is a proof. That this book is something out of this world. But the Quran is the only book. As long as you observe the Tajweed. And you stop where it tells you to stop. You prolong it where it tells you to prolong. And you can choose your tune wherever you want. That's a miracle that everyone can, can relate to it. And, and read it and still not be bored of it. Is it an Iman booster? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. That's just three. If you look at the Qur'an and its meaning, I haven't even got to the meaning yet. Is it amazing? How many of you understand Arabic? Tell me, put your hands up. Right, okay, you don't understand Arabic. But you still find it nice, yes or no? We've been saying the, and reading the Qur'an for our lives, most of us, without even understanding it. Okay, I'm not saying don't understand it. Of course, go ahead and understand the Qur'an, read the tafsir. But when you read the Arabic or you listen to the Arabic, you don't understand it. But yet it's so beautiful. My brothers, because this is a miracle. Anyway, let's get back to Bilqis and Suleiman alayhi salam. There's tangible thing, but you've got to know that there are intangible, unseen things that govern our world. And the thing is, my friends, is that if you carry on going with the tangible things that you see, what do kids see these days? What do youngsters see these days? They see the TV. And on the TV, there's a guy that's got so many rings here that his arms are aching to lift them up. He's made his life into girls and cars. And the youngsters see this on YouTube, on TV, whatever, and they think, Man, I want to be like that. I want to knock my tooth out and put a gold tooth there. What they don't see is, guys, they don't see their past and they don't see their future. My friends, intelligence is not when you just see and you think of what you think and you know what you know. That's not intelligence. Intelligence isn't that you just go out there and you're able to just outsmart people with your words. That's not intelligence. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a hadith a Muslim said near the end of time, there will be people. Who from who amana has gone, trust has gone. And it will remain in, inside like a piece of a, just a dot or something. That's how it will remain. In fact, it will get so bad that people will not be able to find trustworthy people. They'll say, you know, out of this whole community, so and so you can trust, so and so you can trust, so and so you can trust. They will count them on the fingers of Allah. True, is, is this happening today or not? Tell me this. And then the Prophet ﷺ said in the same hadith of Muslim that there will be people at that time who won't have any iman in their heart but people will refer to them and say they will say what a clever man what a clever individual what a successful individual because the guy's got the gift of the gap you understand the guy can talk the guy can walk the guy can talk the guy can convince you that you, you got to be behind him. He's just everything, man. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, they will, they will look at those individuals and they'll say, what a clever and successful individual. When no iman is in the heart. That means that in this dunya, you look at them, you think, man, the guy's got the, he's got the house, he's got the car, he's got the, you know, he's got the business, he's made the money, he's made the billions or the millions or the multi-millions. And look at me, oh, I wish I, I wish I could just be like him. That's, that's what's going on in most people's heads because they only see what they see. But my friend, you want to ask this question. Yeah? Does the one who sells drugs see the aftermath of where he's going? Does he see that he's going to suddenly find himself? He might be a clean guy. But what you don't see is, 
The guy who goes and sees a girl or a girl who sees a boy and that's what they see. That's it. That's my world. That's all I want. I just want him. And it's like, I want her. And the kind of time we're living in, some are saying, I want it. If it's not meant for you, there's no point of crying over it. There's no point of dying for it. Why are you dying for something that might not be meant for you? Whoever rejects Qadr is not a Muslim. Guys, our matrix of this world is through Iman. And we see things differently. Because the thing is, you carry on looking like that. Somewhere or another, you are going to fall in love somewhere. And then what happens after that? You lose your senses. If you've seen someone, then you go through the right means. And if you can get them, Alhamdulillah. If you can't get them through Nikah, then forget it. Go and find life somewhere else. That's dunya. If you see someone with wealth, you're just going to look at them and think, man, there are some people like this. I'm being serious about this. Yeah? Some people, they've got a serious problem of jealousy. They look at anybody who's got more than them, and they come to someone's house here, yeah? they come inside. It's like, you got nice, nice new sofas here, yeah, yeah, nice. But you know, deep inside, it's like, they got new sofas. <laughs> they, the tea, cup of tea comes, and they look at the china cup. <laughs> and inside it's like <laughs> Seriously They come and see works done in your house And if they could yeah They want to be suit man And just like beam out these lasers And blow the whole thing up Because it's killing them inside It's jealousy Rasulullah told us You see something good in somebody else Say Masha Allah Or say Barakallahu Feek May Allah bless you in this. This is what we say as Muslims and really mean it from your heart. And if, you, if you're in a good condition, Alhamdulillah. If you're in a bad condition, Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. I praise Allah on every situ- for every situation I'm in. This is Islam guys. Qana'a, you know Qana'a, this is the matrix of this, this, this religion. Qana'a is I am satisfied with whatever Allah has given me. This is the beauty of the believer. A believer with this qana'a, with this contentment in his heart, you can see a man with a mansion, you say, may Allah bless you. You know, like the Allah that gave me a normal house, that same Allah uh, was pleased to give you a mansion, the same Allah that was happy that I get a three bedroom house, that same Allah is happy that you get a seven big bedroom mansion, and I am absolutely happy with what? with the taqseem of Allah, with how Allah distributes for his servants. That's a mu'min, that's a believer. But some of them, just like you, and just like me, they haven't got peace. You can't buy peace, my friend. It's only Allah's giving. If he gives you peace, he gives you peace. Whether you're a rich man, you can't buy it. Whether you're a poor man, you can't buy it. If Allah gives you peace in your house, you've got peace. If not, you ain't got no peace. What did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tell us? He said, he said, the whole world is full of, full of things that people own. He said, the best, the best thing that a man can possess in this world is a woman who is righteous, who's pious. Not a, he didn't say a woman who's just, you know, so, so amazing to look at. That he has to, con- he has to stop his eyes from coming at the sockets. Now you know what? You got a woman who's pious. Alhamdulillah, you know, all women are good looking and all women, men are good looking. Say Alhamdulillah guys. Alhamdulillah. In the eyes of whoever Allah puts muhabba, puts love. Yes or no? Yes. Let me give you another scenario guys. Some of you are not understanding this. I've seen guys, they're really good looking. I'm not, I'm not, I don't consider myself one of those here. I think I'm average. Alhamdulillah, say brothers. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I seen some guys here, yeah, literally, they just, they just like, they, they come out their door, yeah, and there's girls like, they just can't take their eyes off them. They know, you know, person who's beautiful, they know it. Because they walk here, yeah, they walk, even if it's a girl, yeah, she's walking down, yeah, and she don't, she don't need to look, you know, you've got this vision at the corner of your eyes, yeah. So they know, they, they've already seen them like 50 yards before, they've seen the guy, she thinks, nah, not him. So she's looking down, yeah. And that guy's looking at her, that guy, and she's like, I don't want you, Mr. Ugly. And, and even, even boys do that. You know what happens? These boys, are, I know some boys here, yeah, they're like, they say, no, 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 no. His age is getting higher, higher, higher. He's probably rejected about 47. And the 50th one, yeah, he says, you know what? 
before she even proposes, like, that's the one I want. This 50th one wasn't even interested in him. She's like, don't want you. He's like, no, no, look how beautiful I am. <laughs> and Allah hasn't put the mahabba love in there. Then you know what? He don't get married for several years just because, because of her. I've seen several guys like this. And then in the end, she gets married to some other guy and he's like heartbroken. Now he's looking for the other 49, yeah? They're all married, they've got kids. You know, my friend, mahabba love is from Allah. This all, this whole system is from Allah. You know, if somebody, if you met somebody for the business trade, who made them meet you for the business trade? Who? Take his name, who? Some guys, they've got all the degrees. And they're applying to 400 jobs, but they still can't get a job. Yes or no, guys? Yes. If Allah doesn't want to give it to you, some other guy, he don't even know how to run a business. Allah gives him money. See, our matrix is, we don't look at this whole world and see, you know, that guy made money, that guy's got this, you know, if I do the same thing, yeah, yes, that's fine. Look, if you've got to take up the means in this world, fine. But it doesn't mean that you will become as successful as any of these guys. Why? Because Allah holds the keys to the unseen. Now what that means is that only through Allah you can get something. Now what, what am I saying with all of these girls and cars and what, what am I trying to say to you? Is that most of the guys in this world who lose themselves in the matrix of this world is Shaitan makes them believe in the present without them looking into the future. Let me sum it up for you guys. Guys, understand this quite, quite carefully because I'm going to tell you what real intelligence is. Real intelligence is not just passing an exam. Real intel intelligence is not just to become a successful man. You got no iman here and you're so successful like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told us. What, what is real success? What is real intelligence? Real intelligence is a man who can look at the past and the future, assess it properly and know where he is. Allah says in the Holy Quran, He says, for example, and this is a whole section where Allah has mentioned 15 things in the Quran, all one after the other. Then after that He says, this is wisdom which your Lord has inspired to you. This is a real intelligent man. What is that? Listen to this. I'm not going to go through all 15. I'm just going to give a few of them. Allah says, a man with real intelligence, a woman with real hikmah, what will they do? They see their parents or one of their parents who's old. Don't dare approach them or in any way say, Oof. Don't even say that. Forget beyond that. Don't even say that. Don't, don't try and rebuke them. And when you speak to them, speak to them with gentle words. Why? Allah says, A man with wisdom, a woman with wisdom, intelligence inside them, they will keep their hands down in humility in front of their parents. Say out of your heart that my Lord, my Lord, have mercy on both of them, just as they nurtured me and they brought me up when I was young. This is hikmah. Oh Allah, I now realize I look in the past and I see that I have no existence without these parents. Oh Allah, just as they nurtured me young, that's the past. I also see that there's a moment when I will become old, when I will become feeble, when I will become weak, when I will need the care of others, and who better to get care of than my own children. Oh Allah, the cycle of life with the past and the present, I realize that and that's why out of humility, even if I, dis even if I disagree with my parents, even if I disagree with them, I will not hurt them. Why? Because I don't want the same to be done to myself. This is wisdom. Kids sometimes, they just, they just don't know what they have until they lose it. The pain that you will suffer at the time of the death of your parents, especially your mother, it is nothing like that you've ever experienced in your entire life. You know why? Because the one who gave you life and birth, the one in whom you lived and you lived off, the one without whom you would have no love in your heart, when that peace of humanity of yours rips away from you for good, it is very painful. So before that happens to you guys, your parents, just do the best of looking after them. Because trust me, when they've gone, you will cry. And the only thing on their mouth is what? I wish, I wish I had said this to her. I wish I had done this for her. If you want to have wisdom, this is wisdom. Allah says what after that? 
I want you, O oh Muslims, to start spending on those who are close to you. Give to the orphans, give to the needy. Why? Because guys, whatever we have today is from who? Tell me. If I know the past and future and the present and all of that, and I assess everything, I won't be scared to give. I'll give, I'll give. But what does Allah say? Allah says, Don't be so stingy that you put both of your hands towards your neck and you don't want to give anything at all. Stinginess, no wisdom. Being open, so generous, you give everything, not wisdom. You have to assess everything. Assess your family, assess your future, assess your own, your own needs and necessities. And give to those who are in need. That is wisdom, that is what Allah teaches us. And Allah says, don't waste. So show that Allah, that you appreciate what you've given. That's what it's about. And Allah says what? وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَوْلَادَكُمْ أَوْلَادَكُمْ خَشْيَةَ إِمْلَاقٍ why guys? A real crisis today in the Western European world is a population crisis. And the problem gets worse. Because these brown people and outsiders and foreigners come and every year they're getting a kid. Durum darum, durum darum, durum darum. You know, before marriage, you weren't that prosperous and she wasn't that prosperous. And when you get married, Allah puts barakah together and then you both start, suddenly you start getting things coming towards yourself. And each kid that comes, they bring their own risk with them. Yes or no, guys? Okay, I'm not telling you to have a full, you know, squad, you know, like football team of 22, yeah? If you want to have that, guys, that's fine, yeah? It's up to you now. No, no offense, yeah? But what I'm trying to say is that you, you got to have something that you know, a healthy sort of life where you don't fear for this reason. And what did Allah say? He said, وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا الزِّنَا إِنَّهُ كَانَ فَاحِشًا Don't even go near zina. Don't go near it. Because it's obscene. Now the guy sees what, the girl sees what, that they just want to be with each other. An authentic hadith. And if they give up the relationship, an illicit, uh, illicit relationship, if they give that up, then Allah Azza wa Jal will give them what? Allah will call them on the day of judgment and call them under his arsh. And Allah will say, come under my, the shade of my throne. There is no other shade except for this day, shade on this day. Allahu Akbar. If they give up the illicit relationship or if they have nikah and they get married, then Alhamdulillah, then brother, go, Bismillah. So this is seeing the past and the future. And Allah has said one thing for the believers to think about. He says what? The final matter, the final consequence will be for those who used to be aware of me. Don't walk on the earth like, you know, you own the land. Allah says, you're walking like that, you can't even rip the earth with the feet beneath you. You're trying to show how big you are. <laughs> you're nothing compared to my mountains, Allah says. Don't do that. Why? Because if you look at the end of it, the one who has kibr and arrogance inside him, he will not be able to enter Jannah <clears throat> until Allah somehow forgives him or gets rid of the um, kibr and the arrogance inside him. What, what does that mean? That means he may have to go and burn in hellfire just to get rid of the arrogance. So a person looks at the end and then Allah says, this is what your Lord has inspired to you of wisdom. Now you're wise. You're not just intelligent, you're wise. A wise man, a wise woman takes everything in consideration and they look into, they, they look into where it's going. Where am I going? That's a wise man. The Quran says, where are you going? This is a wise question to answer. What's going to happen tomorrow if I stay with these friends? Shaitan's matrix works exactly the opposite. He just looks at the present. She's so beautiful. Man, if I just got her, all my troubles will be gone. That's it. Man, that money there, that wealth there, if I just got that, oh, I could buy this, I could buy that. He just thinks about it. It makes you think about the present. And the Quran says, Zuyina lahum su'u a'malihim. These, these things are, it glitters like gold. Oh, I really want that. Shaitan wants us to believe in the present, in material things. And his matrix is that he fools you in not thinking about the future. And Allah's way is, He wants us to think about now, the past, and especially the future. And when you weigh everything up, and you see what you're doing, then you become a wise person to say, should I, or should I not do this thing? This is the matrix of the believer. We never see the world again the same way, because this man that is sitting there, and that man that is sitting there, Allah gave him gifts, Allah gave him gifts, Allah gave me gifts. 
Allah gave him deficiencies, Allah gave him deficiencies, Allah gave me deficiencies. Do you understand? This is the believer. Allah blessed him today, may Allah bless him tomorrow. Allah will bless me tomorrow. Allah has blessed me today. This is how we see things. And I see the world how? Every cell of this human being, every brain cell of his, every ligament of his, every part in his body, every bone in his body, every piece of flesh in his body, his heart, his liver, his lungs, all of that are under whose control? Allah's control. His brain is under Allah's control. His body is Allah's control. As in, he can do what he wants right now, fine. But if Allah wills something, then he can't stop it. And he can be in trouble with his lungs right now, but if Allah wills, then he can cure it just like that. Yes or no? That's the matrix of a belief. That's the belief. So we have hope and fear all the time. This is the matrix of the believer. The shaitan either puts you, gives you hope because he wants you to sin, or he gives you fear because you might start worshipping Allah and becoming religious. He works the other way. Quran says, shaitan tries to make you scared of, scared of what? That you might become poor if you start donating money. And he tells you quickly to go and do something which is obscene. That's shaitan's way. My young brothers, my young sisters, wake up. You know, life is goes so fast, so fast. Honestly, Wallah, you just look behind and think you think five years just gone like that, ten years just gone like that. And there's no don't don't try and do anything today that you will regret tomorrow. How do you stop that? My brothers and sisters who are listening, the only way to do it is a person gets to know what the Sharia is, gets to study the, the Quran and the Sunnah, whatever course you can go to do that. And second thing with that is you need to start remembering Allah more and more. The more dhikr of Allah you do, the more you remember Allah, the more the heart gets softened and then you start seeing the true matrix that you're supposed to see, the true belief that you're supposed to have. May Allah Azza wa Jal make it, make it a fruitful life for me and a fruitful life for you. Say Ameen. Jazakumullah khair. وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله